Buongiorno e benvenuti, I'm Stephanie Smith from Lionar Luxury Estate and I'm here today to show you this extraordinary estate for sale in the heart of Montepulciano. Check it out! Today we are in Izzanese and specifically in Montepulciano. Actually, we are right below the medieval town of Montepulciano that we can see in the distance. Even though today is a little bit foggy, but still breathtaking. The property is not far from the Temple di San Biagio that was designed by San Gallo and is an extraordinary example of Renaissance architecture. Siamo nella località dove la Val d'Orcia incontra la Val di Chiana, rendendola una delle zone con la storia vitivinicola più straordinaria della regione. Parlando di tradizione vitivinicola, siamo in questo momento nel vigneto della proprietà, che è solo una parte dei 48 ettari che la circonda. Hey guys, just one thing before we continue with our tour. First of all, thank you for all your support. But we've noticed that 85% of our viewers is not subscribed yet. So what are you waiting for? It's fast and free. And this way you can continue following us all around Italy. But now let's get back to the tour. The estate is home to four buildings, three of which are used for the production of wine and olive oil, while one, the villa right behind me and that we are about to see, is used for hospitality. In the 1990s, the properties were thoroughly renovated, maintaining their classical and original style. I mean, just look at the brick and stone facade. It makes me think of Tuscany and immediately at home. Let's go and take a closer look. Before we go inside, let me tell you a little bit more about the estate. It features four buildings, three of which are dedicated to the production of olive oil and wine, and one villa dedicated to hospitality that has five bedrooms and three bathrooms. All of this is surrounded by 48 hectares featuring an extensive vineyard, an olive grove, and a private lake. Ma ora, venite con me. As soon as we enter the house, we are welcomed in this double living area. The first thing we see is this gorgeous fireplace. I can think of nothing better than just sitting on the couch and warming up in front of a nice fire after a long walk through the vineyards in this cool air. This area of the house is perfectly connected through this beautiful brick archway to the dining room. This is the first of two dining rooms that looks on to the surrounding nature and is connected to the bedroom area. The bedroom area is divided in two, uh, in two parts. On the one side, we have three bedrooms, two of which with a double exposure, thanks to which we enjoy a lot of natural light, but also a nice breeze during the summer months, and one bathroom. While on the other side are two bedrooms that always enjoy a lot of natural light, look onto the surrounding nature, and have one bathroom. And this is the perfect retreat if you're a large family or have a large group of friends to escape from the chaos of the city and enjoy quality time together. But we're not finished here, so if you follow me, let's go check out downstairs. We 
We are on the bottom floor of the villa that was recently renovated and is a large open space divided into three distinct areas which are delimited by these beautiful brick arches. Right in front of me is the TV area. This is the perfect spot to sit and enjoy a nice movie or simply wait for dinner to be ready. Each side of this floor has large French windows that let in a lot of natural light but also give us access to the external garden. This area of the floor is connected to the dining area. Here we have a large dining table that can sit up to 12 people, so even when you have a full house, that's fine, you can seat everyone for dinner. In fact, it leads us right into the kitchen with a central island that has an induction stove and a lot of counter space, which is perfect when you're preparing your meals. From the kitchen, we can access an external dining area that we're gonna see in a second. This external loggiato becomes an external dining area that, as mentioned, has a direct access to the kitchen. And the space also has its own pizza oven. I just love the style of this property. It really makes me feel at home. And during your alfresco meals, you can enjoy the breathtaking view of the surrounding countryside. From here, we can also see the property's private lake that is used for irrigation purposes, but it's also kind of cute to look at. The vines are mainly located on the southern slope of the hill to ensure the best microclimate and soil for the ripening of the grapes and for the harvest. The property is so extensive that it is necessary to drive through it to get from one point to the other. And we have a breathtaking view over Monte Pulciano from every side of the property. The estate has a long wine production tradition, but it also makes its own DOP Torre di Siena extra virgin olive oil following the strictest criteria. In fact, four hectares of land are dedicated exclusively to olive groves, and the olive oil is all made on site, just like the wine. Here is the first part of La Cantina, where we have stainless steel barrels in which the grape must ferments and becomes wine. And by springtime, the wine is ready to pass on to the aging process in another area of the Cantina. As mentioned previously, the estate has a long tradition of wine production. This is another part of the Cantina in which the fermentation process happens. Here, they focus mainly on producing one type of wine, which is the Nobile di Montepulciano, of which they make around 100,000 bottles per year, 10,000 of which are specifically of the Cru di Cascino d'Oro. We are right above La Cantina. This is the Sala Degustazione, where you can taste all the wines and olive oils that the property produces. I like how they maintain some original details like the brick arch and the beautiful wooden floors. From here, you can have tastings with a view. In fact, on the top floor is una terrazza panoramica.
right across from the Sala di Gustazione is this space where we can find various areas. There's an area for the boxing and labeling and an area dedicated to the aging of the wine. Some types of wines need to age in the bottle from six months and up before being put on the market. This cantina is quite new. It was built only two years ago. And this is where the final stage of the winemaking happens. This is where the wine ages in these barrels made of French oak that were also made in France and get changed around every five to 10 years. Right behind me are the original barrels that used to be used in the winemaking and in the aging years ago. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the tour as much as I did. And guys, don't forget to subscribe. I mean, the button is right here. I can't wait to see your comments. And on that note, ciao.